It's actually pretty easy to make popcorn over the stove once you know a couple of tricks. But if you don't know these secrets, then you can end up with a bowl full of burnt kernels. Okay, let me walk you through the process so that you can avoid singed popcorn. First, let's talk ingredients and equipment. You only need three things to get the job done. Popcorn kernels, a pan with a lid, and oil. Now your choice of pot is important. It needs to be large enough to account for the expansion of the popcorn. The bottom of it should also be on the thin side. This is not the time to pull out your heavy duty Dutch oven. You'll actually have a lot more old maids if you use a thick pot. This is my favorite popcorn making pot. It has a large surface area. It isn't too heavy, so it heats up quickly. And it's shallow. I'm not sure why, but this pot works better than my stock pot, which is the same diameter, but it's deeper. I'll have my specific pot or one that's really similar linked below. If you have a deep pot, it will totally still work, just not quite as well as a shallower pot. Okay, now that you've selected your ideal pot, let's talk about your oil. You wanna make sure to choose an oil that has a high smoke point. Some of my favorites are avocado oil, ghee, or expeller press coconut oil. You can even use bacon grease, but keep in mind that its smoke point is lower at around 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, let's get on to the popping process. It's pretty simple, but you do need to follow these steps exactly. Measure out half a cup of popcorn kernels. Next, measure out two tablespoons of oil into your pan. Turn the heat to high and add two kernels of popcorn. Put the lid on the pot and stand back and wait for those two kernels to pop. Once they pop, remove the pot from the heat, fish out those two popped kernels, and pour in the remaining unpopped kernels that you measured out earlier. Now put the lid back on and give the pan a really hearty shake. Now stand back again and let it sit for one minute. This will ensure that the popcorn kernels heat up evenly. Otherwise, some of the kernels will pop too early and they will burn before the rest have a chance to pop. Okay, after the full minute, it's time to put the pan back on the stove. Turn the heat to high again and wait. Give the pan a shake now and then to ensure that the kernels heat up evenly. There's no need to shake constantly though. After just a few minutes, you should start to hear the kernels popping. They'll start out slow and eventually they'll be popping ferociously in there. They may even start to push the lid up but then near the end, the popping will start to slow down again. When the popping is nearly at a standstill, remove the pot from the heat again. Don't open the lid just yet. Let the pot sit there and relax. This allows any stubborn kernels a final chance to pop. Once everything is nice and calm, it's safe to pour the popcorn into a large serving bowl. Now, if you ask me, it's practically a sin to serve popcorn without melted butter. Yes, there are fancy caramel corns and flavored popcorn that don't have to involve butter, but if you're serving it plain, I beseech you to use butter. My favorite kind of butter to use is a cultured butter, sometimes called European butter. It has a tangy, funky, almost cheesy flavor. It really makes the flavor of the popcorn reminiscent of theater or microwave popcorn, but more real tasting, if that makes sense. If you're a popcorn connoisseur, then you must give it a try. I know some will disagree with me, but I like my popcorn practically drenched in butter. For half a cup of unpopped kernels or about 15 cups of popped popcorn, I use seven tablespoons of butter. No more, no less. Okay, okay, sometimes I go ahead and melt the whole stick. If you're just starting out, then you can go with a half a stick of butter and perhaps someday you'll be able to work yourself up to the full seven tablespoons. Now, the butter pour is also important. You must slowly drizzle it over the popcorn in a circular motion. Then tip the bowl to the side and toss the popcorn with a spatula to evenly distribute the butter. It helps if you have somebody stir the popcorn as you pour the butter, but it's not strictly necessary. Another highly important ingredient, Salt. Under salted popcorn is just bland. But remember, you can always add more, but you can't very well add less, now can you? My point is, taste as you go. Give your popcorn a few sprinkles of salt and taste it to see if you need to add more. And make sure to toss well between sprinkles. By the way, I like to use a fine, unrefined sea salt. Larger flakes could work as well, but the finely ground salt will coat the popcorn more evenly. And there you have it, a most glorious bowl of popcorn. Okay, so now you know how to cook popcorn without incinerating it. Up next, I'd like to teach you my secret hack for how to cook a sunny side up egg so that the yolk is still runny and the white is cooked all the way through. 